God is good. And all the time. So as mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, today is the last but one Sunday of the church's year. Next week, Sunday, will be the solemnity of Christ the King. And the Saturday after that Sunday, we will bring this liturgical year to an end. Today, when, you know, this particular reading, the first reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10 following. When I was reflecting on this, I smiled and said, this reading normally we take at weddings. It's one of the readings we take for weddings. So those of you preparing for marriage, you can choose this as one of your readings. So beautiful. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. You know pearls. Far beyond the value of a worthy, virtuous wife. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her. Oh, beautiful. I hope that women in my church, married women, your husband's hearts are with you. Hey, they are not with you. They are with who? The side chicks. <laughs> I know that by parishioners, you don't have side chicks. The, he says that your husband's heart <laughs> is entrusted to you, a virtuous wife. Because she is an unfailing prize. She brings him good, not evil. Mm. So if you see your wife and you start running away, there's a problem. All the days of her life, all the days of the life of your wife, she brings good, not evil. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands, even the way she works. Oh, fantastic. When she's cooking, even the, to even the, even the tomatoes, the way she will touch it. <laughs> the bread, everything. You can imagine when she touches your skin. That would be another thing altogether. <laughs> she puts her hands on the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive. I hope that none of you the man was charmed <laughs> to marry. The charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. Meaning, Make noise, make known at the city gates, eh, at the entrance of the city. Make this virtuous woman known, praise her. And so you ask yourself, but why will the church give us this reading? reading? Are we having a wedding today? No. The character of the virtuous wife. Of course, the church itself is the wife of who? Hey. The church is the wife of who? And who is the church? Not the building, but the, the human beings who sit in you, me. We are the church. Therefore, each of us must radiate this character of the virtuous wife. Am I making sense, please? So this reading is not only for women or for your wife. You say, eh, No, it is for you. The man also. Because we are members of the church. We are members of the church. The bride of Christ. And each of us, in order for us to have salvation, you see, we are breaking the year to an end. So the church is flashing, giving us, you know, the signal that, hey, check your life. So when you look at the things that God has entrusted to you, 
just as a husband entrusts his what? His heart, not the belly, the what? The heart to his. God has entrusted to you his possessions. And that is what we will see in the gospel reading. In the gospel reading, a man, of course, a rich man, he was rich, was traveling and called three of his servants. Mind you, it says, a man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his own possessions to them. His own. Just as the husband gives his heart to the wife, God has given to us his possessions. How are we taking care of God's possessions? Are we like the virtuous wife who fears the who fears the and that is why we sang oh blessed are those who fear and walk when you fear the Lord you perfect so each of us entrusted by God with so much possessions everything in this world is for God everything hey, your life your being your intellect your intelligence mention your wisdom what do you have unless it is evil but every good thing as we heard comes from God everything good anything pleasant is from the Lord your hard work oh fantastic your altruism that sense of giving self selflessness is from God you sit at meetings and you talk and your superiors are like, wow, you are too wise. You feel good, isn't it? It is from who? God has entrusted to you his possessions. And you ask yourself, how do you fear him? Are you fearing the Lord and walking in his ways? And that is why God says, he will bless the work of your what? Of your hands. And that is what he does for the virtuous wife. So this man calls and gives his servants talents. The first, he gave how many? Five. The second, he gave two. And the last, he gave... And the text says, each according to his, according to his ability. When I was in Sunday school, whenever this reading was taken, I was so angry at the rich man. I said, you were a wicked man. You gave the last servant how many? One. Abba. Garbage in... If they are giving him one CD, or maybe one CD, maybe yeah, what can he use one CD for? But no, 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 no. Growing up, studying the scripture in seminary, I said, Hey, God forgive me. My dear brother, my dear sister, one talent. <laughs> you know, I was telling the first mass that if for us alive now, today, if somebody is using the old CD, isn't it? The old Ghana CD, the old CD, and the person says that, oh. My boss was traveling and gave me one billion. Hmm. One what? He gave another servant two billion. And another one, what? Five billion. Hey. What's that? What's one what billion? What's one billion? What's that here? Because one billion is what? It's money. So for you, you think one talent is nothing. No. Let me get you this. A day's wage when you work per day, eh? Is it Ghana? They say minimum wage. Minimum wage was one denarius. One denarius. Now, six thousand of that, six thousand denarii <laughs> equals what? One talent. Am I making sense to you? Six thousand denarii one talent. So this man who received one, never ever think like I was doing when I was a child. That he received nothing. He received a lot. 6,000 denarii if you are calculating is 20 years wage put together. 20 years. Teddy, your 20 years salary. And boom. One. And he, he went to dig the ground Place the money there. 
The same reason. He said, fear. The virtuous wife fears the Lord. Hmm. Not this kind of fear. No. The fear that this so-called servant said, oh, I was afraid. So I went with, no. Not the, the first one is what we call the reverential fear. The gift of the spirit. Fear of the Lord. And when you have that, you are able to understand that, oh, whatever I am is from God. This last servant did not get that. He didn't. And that is why he went to dig and place his talents there. And the master said, hey, Mombra, come and make accounts. The first said, no, oh, master, I, you gave me five. Five more. So, oh, good and faithful servant. You have done well. Hey, in little things, you have been great. I will give you what? Greater. The second one came, oh, you gave me two. Two additional. Four. Take his head. Hey, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful, little things. I will give you. The, our own brother came. You know what he said. And the man said, you. You were wicked. You are wicked. Hey, may this never happen to us. Hey, I said, may this never happen to us. That God will tell us we are wicked. And we are lazy people. Brethren, let me bring this to our spiritual life. Each of us here was consciously created by God. Each of us. Never think that your parents were not married, they met somewhere, and you came out. So teenage pregnancy. So you there, you are just in. I'm telling you, <laughs> God can use it evil for his good. I'm telling you, each of us has a purpose. And God has given us his possessions. He said, the man entrusted. The husband gives his heart to his wife. The man entrusted his possessions to his servants. My dear brother, my dear sister, don't take your wife for granted. Don't take your husband for granted. Don't take your children for granted. Don't take your, your, your family for granted as a child. Your parents, take them for granted. Never. God has entrusted his possessions to you. You are a director general. You are this. You are that. Trust me. God has entrusted his power, his glory, his abilities to you according to what you can carry. The problem is that many of us are looking at others. Say, he received five. Me, I have one. The one who had two. He did not say, why did this man have five? I will not work. Some of us would have said, I won't work. One, 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 five, one, one, two. That's true. Hey. This person said, no. Each according to his ability. Let me make use of the two. And God blessed him. So somebody can sing in church. He can also preach. He can also do this. Don't be envious. Somebody is a mass server. Somebody is a priest. Somebody is an usher. Everybody has been given a talent. Please, make use of your talent. And some of us, I am an introvert. Oh, yes, you can be an introvert, but God has given you a talent. In your silence, in your quiet nature, there is so much you can do for who? For God. Everybody, everybody has been given a task. And Cardinal Bawar, the late Cardinal Bawar, may he rest in peace, he said, in the Catholic Church, the reward for hard work is what? More work. In the Catholic Church, the reward for hard work is more work. So you are a bishop, you are doing well. The church, Rome will do what? Will give you more what? More work, more responsibility. It goes to priests as well. You are a priest, you are busy, you are busy. The church, it doesn't matter. Do more. Huh? Do more. And let faithful. Yes, no father. The same people are working in the church. He's on the harvest committee. He's on the finance committee. You, what are you doing? You, what have you done? When we call you, when we make appeals, do you bring yourself? You won't come. You are waiting for us to write an epistle to you to beg you to come and work for God. Somebody has chosen to be on harvest committee and finance committee and he's working. Continue looking at the person. The person is using his talent. That day, when the master returns and calls you, come. Come and make account. You tell him that, oh, God, I was shy of the parishes in St. James. They will insult me, so I didn't do work.
You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. The master said, "Who oh, you wicked power? Who oh, you wicked? Even if you are sent my money to the bank, interest cash small will do what? Okay. Some of us we are doing nothing. We have just dug and put our talents in the ground. I beg you by the mercies of God, as we approach the end of the liturgical year, please ask yourself." What am I doing for the Lord? Whatever you are doing for God is for your good. Whatever you are doing will not make God greater. No. It is for you. Because as we say in the fourth common preface for the, when you are um, celebrating Mass, we say that our prayer of thanksgiving adds nothing. Nothing. Hey, nothing to your greatness. This one that I'm preaching here it will not add anything to the greatness of who? It will profit who? Me. So whatever you are doing, even if nobody sees it, in your heart, in your being, you know that you have been given talents by God. And because God has given you talents, you are ready and willing to put it into practice. To put them into practice. I hope that we will not be sleeping as we heard in the second reading don't sleep oh. be alert we don't know once I missed a call from a man Mr. Lamte he was a marshal the same council he has never called me before that was the only day he called me I called him back less than an hour I called back nobody his phone was off I said why did this man call me about 8 p.m. On, my, on our WhatsApp platform, Council 48. They would be, and I've, till today, I've been asked, by God, why did this man call me? They put there, we regret to announce the death of Brother Susan Zul Lamte. I said, what? And so I asked them, why was he sick? Maybe he called me when he was in the hospital. He said, no. He, was walk, he went to visit his brother. They were walking to pick a car. He collapsed and he died. If he was even sick, I would understand. Maybe he called because... Uh, I, never, I don't know why he called me. And I've been asking my, over three years, I've been asking myself, why did he call me? I don't know why I'm always asking that question. But the point, what am I trying to say? The family of Uncle Godfrey, not to remind you, Cynthia, of the loss of your husband. It came same. Your husband was fit. He wasn't bedridden. With all respect, he just, you were called, your husband is dead. It happens. You don't know when. I'm telling you, my brother, my sister, my dear parent, Father Kujo, I don't know where though no, I can't prophesy and tell you you will leave tomorrow. I myself, I don't even know when I will go. But the point is that a day will come, the master will do what? Will call you. When he calls you, how are you going to make your accounts? May the name of the Lord be praised now and forever. Amen.